Good morning, everyone. We're so happy you could join us for our Paleo Puppet meet and greet today. Uh, as you can see, I'm not at the museum, even though I do work at the museum. My name is Ilana Gustafson, Manager of Performing Arts. And uh, today we're going to share with you our Paleo Puppet meet and greet. Will you get to know this puppet you may see on the screen already? You'll get to know that puppet a little bit better and meet a couple of our performing artists. I'm here just to get you all settled and ready to enjoy it the best that you can. So um, first of all, I wanna let you know that there are potentially hundreds of people watching right now and you can't see them. You can only see us and we can't see you either. Uh, so if you do want to participate with our program today, you're more than welcome to use the chat function. And in order to do that, um, it may look different depending on the device you're using. So um, if you're on a tablet, like an iPad, the chat button will be on the upper right-hand corner. And if you're on a computer or a laptop, like a Chromebook, your chat button will be on the bottom middle. And also if you're on a phone, the chat button will be on the bottom middle. And if you are watching on YouTube, unfortunately, um, you won't be able to participate in the chat, but hopefully you enjoy our presentation today. Um, also, I wanna let you know that we have a lot of people helping out behind the scenes. Uh, so it's not just me, you're gonna meet some other people and we'll also have uh, some of our friends from the museum helping out in the chat. So we'll have Jenny, John, Mark, Betsy, Robert, and you'll meet John and Eli in a moment. All right, now, if you don't want to use the chat function, there is another way you can participate today, and that is by writing down on a piece of paper, grab a piece of paper, and on that paper, you could write down questions you might have about the puppet, things that you're learning along the way, or, and or, you can draw a picture of the puppet or dinosaur or any other um, things that come up in our presentation today. And if you want to send those questions or images to us, we love to receive some fan mail. Uh, so you can email those to your teacher who can then email your pages to us. And we'll drop that uh, link or email address in the chat for you teachers and parents to send our way. All right. So that's all I have to share, and I'm really excited now to introduce you to your host for the program, Mr. Jonathan Williams. Hi, hey, John. Oh. Hey, Alana. Thanks for that intro. Yeah, no I problem. I I'd see beans somewhere in your screen, but not today. Yeah, no, my cat is running around somewhere, but he okay. might join us later. <laughs> well, I guess we'll just, we'll just do the presentation then. That, that, yeah, that, that works too. Good. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome. Glad you're able to join us today. Uh, we're going to show you a little bit about what we do here with our performing arts department at the museum. Virtual background. I'm at home. Don't worry about it. I'm safe. Um, and then we'll hopefully answer some of your questions to talk about how and why we do all the things we do. So uh, I'm sure you're familiar by now, but you know, shoot any of those questions you have into the chat and hopefully we can get to them. But remember, there are hundreds of you and only a few of us. So let's get started. So why don't I introduce our dino puppet pal. This is the one and only Sauropodomorph A. Yeah, that's a mouthful, huh? Uh, okay, so I wish we had a better name for this right now. Um, but uh, this species of dinosaur is so recently discovered, the scientists haven't actually finished uh, coming up with a name yet because they're still researching and studying everything. So if we can't name this species of what this dinosaur might be, maybe we can hopefully come up with just a, a name for this individual. Um, uh, so if you have any suggestions, please shoot them into the chat, please. It can be your name, someone else's name, a, a silly made up name, anything you want at all. I sometimes like making up names like Fluterban, things like that. Um, but just go ahead and pop that in the chat. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about uh, this puppet and the fossils that it was based on so you can uh, have some context to come up with a name. Um, this is a juvenile sauropodomorph A. The fossils that were discovered of this dinosaur were only of a four or five year old individual. And this puppet is probably a representation of maybe a one or two year old. So it's just a baby. 
Um, and for size comparison, if you're wondering, it's probably about the size of a, uh, a large cat or a small dog. I'm actually here with uh, this dinosaur puppet. So I'm gonna put my hand there in the frame so you can kind of get a sense of the scale. All right. Whoa, okay, yeah. Oh, it's friendly. Okay, good. Excellent. Fantastic. Uh, the other thing you should know is that uh, I think my hand is safe. Pretty sure that this dinosaur is a an herbivore eating a lot of these ferns you see uh, down in front of you. That's based on the fossils of its teeth and also of some of the plant life uh, fossils that were found in the same area where it was discovered. Um, Alana, how are we doing with names? Anything sticking out to you? Yeah, we have some good names coming in. We have uh, Diddly. We have Straightforward Dino. We have Noahsaurus, and you can maybe guess the name of the person who uh, suggested that. Um, we have, but I'm not sure how to pronounce this, Philippiosaurus, maybe? Okay. Philippiosaurus. Um, we have Biggie. Pojo and Pomo. Okay. I don't know. Uh, I, I kind of like Noahsaurus. I think of, I think that's what's calling to me. That's what we're going to call Sauropodomorph A from now on. All right. From now on, I, I am calling you Noahsaurus. Uh, so you can also call this dinosaur whatever you want, uh, wherever you are. Uh, but that's just what I'm going to uh, refer to this uh, dino puppet as just for convenience. So I mentioned that uh, Noahsaurus here, the fossils that it was based on were recently discovered. So I wanted to ask you just to take a guess of where you think that discovery happened, specifically on which continent of Earth, uh, which continent on Earth did uh, these fossils come from? Uh, and to give you a little bit more context too, we've got the, uh, the um, pole up there now, that's the word. Uh, paleontologists, there are active fossil digs for dinosaurs on every continent on earth, all seven. So it could be any one of those. Um, and uh, I can give you a hint that I was very surprised where this, uh, this, these, uh, this dinosaur's fossils were found. Um, you know, some dinosaurs, specific species, they can be found only on one single continent. Others can be found on multiple continents. For example, T-Rex, uh, you know, this, this one right behind me here that everyone knows T-Rex, right? That is a very specifically North American dinosaur on the continent of North America, mostly in the Midwest here in a place called the Badlands, oftentimes the, uh, the Hell Creek Formation in a specific area where we found uh, T-Rexes. Um, but yeah, and like I said, other ones we've found in uh, lots of different places on, on Earth, on most different continents. So um, I wonder, I wonder how, how, long, what, how long of a journey it took Noahsaurus to get to Los Angeles. Why don't we take a see what's the, uh, what's the poll looking like, Alana? Oh, okay, I see. So a lot of North and South America, Australia, Excellent, pretty all tied up there. Then coming in Africa after that, Europe. All right. Okay, well, I think we'll, we'll, we'll reveal this. Um, so you're probably gonna be very surprised about this. And remember I said I was surprised about where this dinosaur's fossils were found as well. The answer of which uh, um, continent this dinosaur's fossils were found is Antarctica. Yes, Antarctica, way down there at the South Pole that icy frozen tundra place, Antarctica. Uh, if you were surprised by that, you're not alone. I was surprised that there were even any sort of digs going on around there. Um, you, may have, you may remember I mentioned that they have found um, plant fossils of what uh, was around at the time when um, Noahsaurus here was roaming the earth and there were these green ferns there and that's kind of at odds with what we know of Antarctica. You might think of Antarctica as the icy place. I think we have some pictures there of where our paleontologists, yeah, this is a picture of base camp where they were just, you know, when they weren't digging, when they were, uh, you know, taking breaks and eating, that was where they had all their tents and camps and stuff like that. But when they wanted to find the fossils, they actually had to take a helicopter up to the mountains, as you can see here, mountains, not covered in ice, it's just the rock there. That is unfortunately because of climate change, a lot of that ice is melting, but small silver lining and it exposes the fossils that are there. 
Uh, and so these are our excavators you can see here uh, working away on those rocks there in the mountains and they uh, find these fossils there and they have found fossils of Noosaurus here, <laughs> the sauropodomorphae and things it might have eaten like these ferns and things like that as well. Um, that's part of the reason why this puppet has that kind of greenish bluish hue. Um, we made this puppet for an Antarctic dinosaur exhibit um, and we wanted to reflect that we don't know exactly what color Noosaurus skin might have been when it was alive, but we took a look at the plant fossils that they found. We thought maybe it would be a color like this to help it blend in, hide from predators and such, things like that. So it was more of like a, an informed artistic decision in terms of that. Um, if you are surprised to find that there were, you know, dinosaur fossils in Antarctica, um, you'll be even more surprised to know that there are dinosaurs in Antarctica to this very day. Uh, that is because paleontologists uh, consider all modern day birds to be the living descendants of specifically theropod dinosaurs uh, and are dinosaurs themselves. So penguins are dinosaurs in Antarctica on the South Pole today. Yeah, uh, shocking, I know. <laughs> um, I'm sure you have lots of questions. Um, and we're gonna to get to those in a second. I'm gonna throw it to Alana real quick uh, to do a little bit of a shout out and then I'll introduce you to the puppeteer bringing Noahsaurus to life. So take it away, Alana. Yeah, I just wanted to take a moment to say hello to all of the schools who are with us today. So we have Lake Alboa, Yorba Linda, Alita, Los Angeles and Monterey. So thank you very much for being here today. And thank you, Noah, for naming our puppet. <laughs> Excellent. So I am going to take off my digital background here. Uh, I am sheltering in place with my coworker, Mr. Eli Presser. That's why we're not wearing masks right now at the moment. Um, uh, Eli, you are technical supervisor, puppeteer extraordinaire. You've been puppeteering a long time, like decades and such. So uh, we're here to answer some questions. Eli and I are gonna be great at answering a lot of puppet questions and things like that. Other dinosaur questions, we can manage some. We'll do our best, but uh, let us know what you got. So um, yeah. Hey there, everyone. <laughs> All right, well, we have a question about the puppet. So let's hand it off to Eli right away. So um, what is it made of and who created this puppet? All right, yeah, that's a great question. So uh, this puppet is, uh, has a few different parts uh, of it to answer your question about what it's made out of. Uh, the puppet, uh, what you can see is fabric that's been put over it, but inside there, there's a skeleton that's made out of wood and metal. Uh, so if you see that neck, that's a, that's a group of uh, wooden pieces that have a string running through them. And that's what allows it to roll around the way it does and change its shape. Uh, in the mouth, that's a mix of parts, there's uh, plastic, for the teeth. Uh, and then uh, there's um, more metal pieces for the joints that let its mouth open and close. And then the controller, uh, which you can see right here, is made out of wood. And then we have strings going down. This type of puppet is called a marionette. So it is a puppet that's operated by a controller above uh, and using uh, and pulling those strings against the weight of the puppet to get different sorts of movements which is why right now it's flying around when I lift it up. Uh, it was made by a puppeteer named Robin Walsh who lives here in Los Angeles with us. Uh, and she worked with the paleontologists from our museum to uh, come up with ideas of what this puppet should look like, uh, what they thought this dinosaur uh, might've looked like, and uh, also uh, making decisions about just how we thought we wanted to represent it, how it, what we wanted it to move. Uh, so here we have some pictures of Robin working on the puppet, or rather her process of working on the puppet. So she would have started off by doing some drawings of the puppet after talking to the paleontologist, and she would have shown them that. So they gave her, uh, they gave her examples of what they thought the skeleton would have looked like, fully formed, uh, how the, um, you know, just sort of general ideas of what kinds of colors it might have been. Uh, so here you can see that she's uh, taken sketches probably from her notebook, or a sketch, and enlarged it. Uh, to about the size she wanted it to be. After she would have, uh, after she finished that, she would have moved on to uh, making a uh, more, uh, a slightly more complicated um, representation of what that puppet was going to end up looking like. And you can see right there that it's really pretty similar. 
uh, what she did there. She would have made that just out of foam board, uh, what we use a lot of times for presentations. I know I used it a lot for science fairs when I was younger. Um, just to get a general sense of how big it was, where uh, you needed strings to go to get the kind of movements we wanted. Uh, and once she finished that, she would have begun to actually sculpt the puppet. Uh, so here you can see her sculpture for the head. Again, you can see the similarity between what she had early, her early design of it and where we ended up. I'll have it come back a little bit so you can see that in profile, just as it is in the picture. She would have made that out of clay, probably modeling clay, an oil-based clay that doesn't dry so that you can keep on working on it and coming up with different ideas uh, as she got in more information from the paleontologists. I hope that answers that question and uh, we're very ready to hear uh, what else you have for us. Yeah, I, I saw some things coming up in the chat. I know somebody was wondering if it was uh, male or female um, based on the fossils that we have. We don't know, hard to tell by just the fossils. Um, so, you know, if you want to imagine it, whichever way, go ahead. That's fine. Um, somebody asked about the color. I had mentioned that before. We don't know exactly what color it would have been. This is just one we chose because we thought it would match some of the um, uh, environment that we know about through the fossils, the ferns there, things like that. Uh, yeah, what else we have, Alana? All right, um, let's see. We have Tereska who wants to know, are all dinosaur names in Greek? In Greek? Oh, thank you. That's a good question. Um, short answer, no. Uh, they can be in Latin. They can be in different languages. Um, uh, Brian, you know a little bit more about this. Our, our chat helper, Brian here, he is uh, well versed in the dinosaur arts, so to speak. Uh, he's gone on some field trips. So is Alana and, uh, and Jenny, by the way. But I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about the naming of dinosaurs. If you're if you're up for that, Brian, if you can share your voice with us. Hello, John Williams. I actually just attended a lecture about scientific naming yesterday. Oh, fantastic! That's so we're there. Names get uh, Latinized. Um, so they often. So, for instance, there's a dinosaur named after Hogwarts, <laughs> which is the castle in Harry Potter, but they they convert it to Latin, so it's. I can't remember exactly what it is, but it's like Hogwarticus or something like that. Mm -hmm. But then some dinosaurs are named, some have Chinese names, like Yi Qi uh, is a famous dinosaur that has a Chinese name, but it's not written in Chinese characters. So that's generally how they, they kind of Latinize the names. Okay. And does it depend at all on like who made the discovery or where or... There, there's a certain code that they have to follow. Since Latin is considered a dead language, they, they tend to just use that as a foundational way of naming them. Cool. Well, I learned that, something today too. That is a wonderful question. <laughs> All right. Oh, I saw someone before wondering, um, Eli, uh, how did you learn how to puppeteer? Maybe this puppet, maybe you want to talk about in general, just puppeteering. Sure. Uh, yeah. So I, uh, I started, I, I first started uh, puppeteering when I was about 15 years old. Um, I saw a lot of puppet shows uh, where I grew up in Chicago, and I just really loved the idea of trying to figure out how to make things uh, move as if they were alive. Um, and so I started from there and worked with different people and just uh, but, but the way I really started was I just started picking, making things uh, that I could move. And it wasn't necessarily about trying to make something that looked exactly like it, uh, it needed to. It was just about figuring out how I could make something around my house move like it was alive. I made a lot of my first puppets just out of tape and aluminum foil and uh, paper. And I still make a lot of puppets that way. Um, and in terms of learning, uh, especially with marionettes, sometimes it can feel kind of intimidating. Uh, you look at it and you see all these strings, but really those strings, it's kind of like how, if any of you have uh, been learning how to play any instruments, uh, how you start figuring out what types of things come out of it, what types of, uh, with, with an instrument, what kinds of sounds come out of different ways of playing strings or how you, you know, hit the instrument or whatever type of instrument it is. And it's really the same thing with this type of puppet. So, you could start with a doll at your house or a stuffed animal or a toy or really anything and just start playing around with it and seeing what kinds of things happen. And if you're interested in a marionette like this, just tie some string to something you have around the house and move it around with strings and see what happens when you pull it in different ways. 
Yeah, uh, I can speak from my own experience that, yeah, the marionettes were very uh, intimidating at first to try and learn. Um, all of us on the team will take turns with different puppets. Uh, Eli has the most experience, uh, especially with marionettes. And so he has uh, guided us a lot. But, you know, I know, like, I can think just looking at that, like, there's all those strings, I don't have enough fingers to, to do all of that. And it's not necessarily that, you know, you're, you're plucking every string, you know, like a uh, like that but the way that you have these subtle movements and just sort of seeing what things look like when they really move and then seeing how a puppet moves and how you can sort of get uh, translate that idea yeah I don't know. that's what i think <laughs> what else we got alana okay, a couple more uh puppet questions we have um a few people alexander and mateo really curious about the teeth of this puppet and what they're made out of and how they're made and then um we have a couple people, including Kendall, asking how long, you explained how the puppet was made, but they are curious about how long it takes to build something. Oh, how long it took. Uh, yeah, hey, Eli, go ahead, yeah. Yeah, um, so those teeth, uh, I don't know if we can, show, yeah, I can just show you these ones, can I? Go on a second, let's get that a little closer. So these teeth in there, uh, I don't know, maybe, uh, I don't know where you guys were all at, but I know when I was a kid, uh, around some of your ages, I had to get a lot of dental work done. I had to get braces and all these types of things, a retainer. Um, and really what's in that mouth is very, very similar to a retainer. So what happened is we have the sculpture of this whole head of the puppet. And then that inside part of its, uh, of its mouth, that would have done, we would have done, uh, Robin made a sculpture of it uh, in clay and then would have made something called a mold of it which is where you use another material uh, to make a double. If you've ever used, if you've ever pressed clay against a coin or some other object and you've pulled it off and you've looked at it and you've seen the shape of it in there, that's what a mold is. So we would have made a mold and then cast it with another material. In this case, uh, a type of uh, uh, something called resin. Um, and that resin is basically, it, it's, it is, it's plastic. So if you've ever seen a Barbie doll or anything like that, those are usually made out of resin. Um, a lot of action figures are made that way. That's what's inside of there. So we would have made that, uh, that cast, make cast it in plastic, and then uh, attached that in there. And it's just screwed into the top of the rest of the puppet. In terms of how long it took, um, this one probably took um, about uh, six months to make. Um, but think about it this way. Uh, it took that time partially because Robin needed to talk with paleontologists and there was a lot of conversation and thought about it and, and experimenting. Um, and, and, and I think a lot of times we think about something as being hard or easy or good or bad based on how long it takes. Uh, and I think really it's just about always experimenting and always playing with things that you're interested in. Uh, so, and that just takes as long as it takes. Uh, and that's what, so that's definitely a part of how I like to work is just, just thinking of everything. Every time I work with this puppet, it's always practice and it's always fun and I'm always experimenting. So I don't think I'm ever finished working with the puppet. I'm just always learning something new that I can do with it. Yeah. Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, and also like, even when it, we got it, I think this is puppet's about two years old now, two and a half maybe? That's, that sounds about right. Yeah, it was for uh, an Antarctic dinosaur exhibit um, that was a traveling exhibit. Um, one of our main uh, paleontologist researchers worked on that. I think it kind of came out of the Field Museum, but we, we helped a lot uh, here at NHMLA. And, um, you know, even once we got the puppet, there are things that we will change depending on what we're doing with it and things like that. Eli is much taller than me. Sometimes uh, a lot of the other people on the team are shorter, and so he'll adjust the height of the string so it's a little bit easier for us. Um, other times, um, you know, it, it just sort of what we want to do with it changes, and so we might make some modification, things like that. Things might break, and Eli will have to repair something and, and make it a little different, so it is a little sturdier, things like that, too. Um, somebody was asking why we made it I, um, and how we use it before, so when we were not in uh, sheltering at home, we would be at the museum, and we would just be walking around the museum, and people were coming to see the dinosaur fossils, and then hopefully would be pleasantly surprised to see a, a cute dinosaur and then hopefully want to learn more about it. And that's kind of a lot of what we do with any of our puppets that we have uh, at the museum is to just sort of 
build on the excitement that most of us seem to already have about dinosaurs and other extinct animals anyway. What else we got, Alana? What do we got time for? Well, I just want to um, mention that Haley wanted to let us know that this is really interesting with three exclamation points. Um, and Kaya, I wanted to answer Kaya's question real quick. She wanted to know um, what our YouTube channel is and she would like to um, like and subscribe. And if you look up uh, Natural History Museum of Los Angeles County, um, you will find uh, that's the name of our YouTube channel. And hopefully we can take a moment to drop it in the chat. But if not, if you search for that um, title, um, you can find our YouTube channel there. And hopefully you all can subscribe. There's lots of great videos on there from our scientists and we have some other ones up there. So, um, and then uh, I think one, we have time for maybe one or two more questions. Um, Kaya also wants to know, how long this dinosaur is is in the puppet and how long a real one would be. So size comparison again. Okay. So I would say long from like nose to tail, that looks about like two or three feet to me. Um, so like a, a large cat, a small dog, the, the fossils that we found, uh, we, the researchers, the, the paleontologists and excavators that they found, they were only of a four or five year old. So we didn't have an adult, but that one uh, was certainly bigger than this one. It was like the size of a large dog. Um, Brian, do you happen to remember off the top of your head, if you're still listening there, how long the, the four or five year old was? I want to say it was like five or six feet long. Oh, it was nine feet long. Nine feet. Crazy, oh, right? That's a lot. That's a lot of feet. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, nine feet long was the four or five year old. So not really sure how big it got as an adult because we haven't found those fossils yet that we know of. Yeah. Great, and then Katie wants to know, do we have other puppets? So maybe we could share a few pictures of some of our oh, other. Excellent question, Katie. I like talking about all of our other puppets. Uh, let's take a look at some now. So when we are uh, back at the museum, we've got very large puppets uh, in comparison to our cute marionettes. This is a, a picture of our Triceratops puppet, which is life-size for what about a five or six-year-old Triceratops might uh, have been. And this is the full suit puppet. So this is a puppet that like I myself operate sometimes. I climb fully inside of it, bring it to life. I use a microphone that distorts my voice to roar. It's something like we think a dinosaur might have sounded like. We've also got, what do we got next? What's our next picture? We've got a T-Rex puppet. Everyone loves T-Rex. Uh, also life-size for about a five or six year old uh, T-Rex. Uh, one of our paleontologists, Dr. Chiape, uh, was very insistent on um, the connection between, uh, like I said, theropod dinosaurs earlier and birds. Uh, T-Rex is a theropod dinosaur and there has been evidence of other theropod dinosaurs closely related to T-Rex that show the existence of feathers, proto feathers. Pretty sure that T-Rex had proto feathers. So we've got fluffy uh, proto feathers <laughs> there on our T-Rex. We've got more marionettes that Robin Walsh made. These are our squirrels that we like to use for things like nature fest, sometimes summer nights in the garden. That's me and Eli there. Um, what else we got? Oh yeah, we got stilt creatures. So we've got a monarch butterfly on stilts. We've got some jumping fleas on jumping stilts. Those are a lot of fun and are also very exhausting uh, and very silly. Uh, what else we have? Oh, lots of shadow puppets. So Eli and a lot of the other team members have done a lot of workshops with students like yourselves, uh, uh, creating their own shadow puppet shows based on things at the museum. We've also created our own just as a performing arts team um, to do our own shows for the public as well. And um, is there anything else I'm leaving out? I'm not sure. Sounds pretty good. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, that's, that's, that's the basic gist of everything. We got a lot of stuff, um, but we've got uh, Noahsaurus here with us sheltering in place. So yeah, yeah, that's what we got. And um, is that about all we have time for, Alana? Yeah, I think that's all we have time for. Thank you so much. If you want to email any further questions to us, uh, please do. Thank yeah. you. So thank you all for joining us. I hope you enjoyed that. If you um, would like to maybe try your hand at making your own puppet, uh, dino puppet even, we've got a little DIY shadow puppet um, project that you can use. And again, yeah, take any pictures and send them our way if you want. You can tag them on social media if you post them there. Um, let us know what you're up to. If you drew pictures, 
if you wrote a poem, a haiku about a dinosaur or anything else, all those things are possible. Uh, thanks again for joining us and we will hopefully see you at the museum when it's safe to do so. Thanks everyone. Bye. Thank you all. See you. Thank you.